on. Today we're going to be installing a tow hitch in my 2018 Volvo XC90. Now this install is the same across the whole current gener generation V90 and even the XC60 lineup. And I'm installing this tow hook for a couple of reasons. One, I want to retire using my sedan to carry a heavy bikes on top of the roof. Two, it is quite difficult to put bikes on top of a tall SUV. And three is I want to be able to tow a trailer when I make Home Depot runs instead of putting things on top of the roof. There are many tow hitch options out there for the XC90, but there's one that stands out the most and it's one that's made by Stealth Hitches, which is a company that developed this hitch solution which hides under the bumper and it only sticks out when you really want it to. Volvo for example offers its OEM solution but it requires you to cut a big portion of the bumper and it doesn't look as great. The Stealth Hitch comes in two options. The rack option which is everything you see in the picture and allows you to mount any type of uh, a rack into your bumper and it comes with everything pictured here at hardware including very very detailed instructions or you can opt for the tow package which comes with all the wiring obviously a tow hook after you install all the wiring here it requires you to visit the dealer to program the car to recognize the wiring but it should not take more than an hour and these are the tools that are needed for this job i think everyone should have most of these tools in their garage if not i will link every tool in the description in case you are interested in buying it and doing it yourself the first step is removing this wheel well trim piece and to do this you first of all grab a pair of gloves and pry gently from this side it is held by these clips which should simply pop out now it doesn't matter if you have a base momentum mom, uh, trim or inscription it all is attached the same way be sure also not to bend the trim as to not flake the paint and as you can tell, this was pretty straightforward. The trim is held using these yellow clips. Next is we're going to remove one, two, three, four, five trim screws using a T25 Torx bit. If you have mud flaps, the procedure is pretty much the same. In my case, I actually made these mud flaps myself and I sell them on the side. So I'm going to link everything in the description. By the way, to keep myself organized, I am using this awesome, awesome grip mat. There are many options out there. I went with this one because it's flexible, it's grippy, it's got a lot of cool compartments. It's got a measuring tape right in the middle and it helps me keep track of all the little bolts, clips and whatnot. Next is we open up the tailgate. Don't mind the mess. And you remove these two rubber bump stops. And to do so, you just turn them clockwise and they should twist out. Oh, you can use a set of pliers. Next, under the bumper, you've got one, two, three, four T25 torque screws to undo. Next is we're going to remove the three plastic clips holding the bumper together and to do so you need some sort of a plastic trim removal tool. I'm going to link everything in the description. The next step is pulling the whole bumper cover out but not completely removing it because we have to disconnect some wiring that's here. So you want to extend it maybe a, a half a foot away from the car and uh, disconnect the wiring. The tailgate might close on you. <laughs> Come on. It's good to do it with two people. If you are the only one, just put something under the bumper so it holds it up until you're ready to fully remove it. And the clip is right here. So you just press it and it should come right out. Ooh, no two people need it. And once again, this is the clip. So I detached it from here and this is what it looks like. And to remove it, you simply press this button here and it comes right out. 
We can now move this bumper to a safer location, ensuring it stays on the blankie. Next is we take a deep wall 15 millimeter socket and remove six of these nuts. One, two, three, four, five, and there's one under. And then down here, if you're having issues, just use a regular wrench to undo the bottom one. And now we can simply remove it. It's pretty light. Now, what you do is you take a marker and outline the area where you want to trim this piece. And the manual calls for something like this here. And we're going to fold along that edge. And gloves are crucial here. So again, you see, you just bend it backwards. Next is we flip our bumper on its back and you sort of, so this is pretending this is the back of the car. So you are going down and you need to trim this area. The manual does a great job telling you what needs to be trimmed, but essentially you need to cut out 16 inches and sort of cross the line here and here. And up here, you're just gonna trim it across the edge. And the manual calls for a Dremel, but I'm gonna see if I can use the snipping snippets. Well, look at that. Here we've got some wires. So my hand is in the back making sure I don't cut anything. And in the absence of a Dremel tool, you can just simply use a knife and cut across this edge here. You might have to make a couple of incisions, but it'll get the job done. Quite easily, actually. We are now ready to install the hitch. And don't be silly. Don't install it upside down. Do yourself a favor, do it the right way. Next is you take the reinforcement bar and again, make sure not to install it upside down. It is marked to left and right. So do it like this. And now we're going to use the supplied nuts to attach it here, as well as a bolt with a washer to fill in the fourth hole. So this is what the three look like. Then you take the supplied bolt with washers, you put the lock washer up top and then you put a flat washer underneath and you put it right here in the third hole. And you need to torque it to 40 foot-pounds of torque. If you are installing a hitch kit, you are pretty much done. All you have to do is just add this piece to the bottom and you are good to go. You can start putting the bumper back together. But since I'm installing a trailer kit, there are a couple of additional steps I need to take. So let me show you how to do that. Next is you actually follow the directions because it, there's a fantastic diagram here, is you want to assemble the latching mechanism. But in a nutshell, it goes like this, like this, this attaches to the bottom of your hitch, then next to it, you are sandwiching this here, which will in turn allow you to sandwich this connector here at the bottom. And these are three quarter nuts and you tighten them to 90 foot pounds. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to lift this up, remove the center piece, pull it out of the way, and we're going to unlatch this storage compartment. And it's simple, you have these two clips, you press them in and it pops right out. And here in the trunk, we have to identify two wiring harnesses that will attach to our trailer. And they, if they've never been used, they have these foam protectors over them from the factory. So what you just do is you expose them. And this is what this one looks like. Then you grab the Volvo control module that's supplied with the stealth hitch kit and you simply plug these plugs here. 
Next is we move over to the side of the vehicle and unplug this rubber piece through which we will wire this connector which also connects to the box. Now the wiring harness that comes with the kit comes with this replacement plug so we will simply discard it. And essentially you snake it through and stick your hand inside the little pocket to pull the cable through. And we take the connector and plug it to the back end of the box, which is located here. Then on the side, we can simply push the cable in and push the weather stripping in place. Next is we grab the seven way connector and we remove these two side screws using a Phillips screwdriver. And this allows you to pop the center open, revealing the connector where you're going to connect all the wiring. Next is you grab the end of the wiring connector and you push it all the way through until you see it pop out. Next is you take your wire strippers. If you don't have wire strippers, you can just use a knife, but you strip the ends of each wire. And next, you simply follow the manual uh, in terms of connecting the cable. So black, brown, purple, yellow, white, and blue. So this is now completed. Again, if you follow the manual's diagram, you'll be good to go. And keep in mind that the reverse one is in the middle and the reverse is purple. And what I'm going to do is, even though the manual doesn't call for it, I'm gonna put some electrical tape here just because. And then when you're done, you just push everything in place and tighten with the two screws. And last but not least, the one in the back. Next is you grab your bracket, you take your wiring connectors and you snake it through and attach it. Now, there's only one way to attach it. So if you flip it upside down, you can see which way the holes line up. So you can see that they do not align this way, right? But they align that way, which means the flap will open up sideways. And next, we're going to take it and attach it to the side of the hitch right here. And this is what it looks like. You just want to make sure these are tightened. As we're nearing completion, the next thing we have to do is we have to take the ground wire that came with the kit and connect it to the ground plug that's right down here. But obviously you don't want to go over. What you want to do is you want to go under, snake it through. So now the control module that's included with the kit came with a fuse and it's in this foil. Initially I thought I lost it, but no, I didn't. So it's a 40 amp fuse. What you wanna do is you wanna take it out and there's a fuse box in there. You take the cover off and you put this plug in a specific place. Let me show you exactly where. So I got the fuse box open. As you peek in, this is where it goes, right there. So check this out. This is the 40 amp fuse that we inserted. And then you simply cover the fuse box. And then the last step is to take this double-sided tape and find an area to secure the controller. I found that the back wall here is a good place and this is a Velcro double-sided tape. So it's actually very, very sticky and stick it to the back wall here, just like that. And we can start putting this area back together. Let's not forget to tuck this wire in using the supply zip ties. So this is how I chose to tuck my wire. It goes under here and then I use this support to kind of tug it in place and I pull the excess behind here. It looks clean and it stays away from the exhaust pipe. Now, before I start putting things back together, let me just show you what the clearances look like from top. As you can tell, this rack has been 
engineered to perfection. You've got about less than a quarter of an inch clearance between this brace here and the rack and the clearances are exactly identical. So it's dead straight, it's welded perfectly and it looks super, super cool. And as we come down here below the bumper, this is what the hitch looks like. Now, you wonder how do you attach the actual hitch part? Well, you take this rubber piece which reveals the keys. The keys are used to unlock it and this is where the locking mechanism is. So you insert this key here like this and you turn it to the unlock position. Make sure this is also unlocked. Then you take your hitch kit and stick it in place. And the lock is actually spring operated. So once you insert it in place, it locks in place. Then you turn the key, you lock it, you put the cap back on, and you are good to go. You can attach all sort of attachments in here. We are now ready to put the bumper in place. So again, let's make sure it lays flat. Let's slide the blanket in place. Just like removing, this is the reverse of removal. So we're gonna have to make sure we plug this connector back here before we fully assemble it. So let's lift it up. And actually here I've got my helper. The hitch is actually helping me. So this gets connected. And why did I call it a stealth hitch? Well, because with just a little tool, or rather a key, you could simply unlock it and slide the whole assembly out. And now you can even tell that this car has a hitch installed. But for me, I'm going to put it in and wear it proudly. And we're done. I've got to say kudos to Stealth Hitch for not only providing a quality, quality product that doesn't require to cut into the bumper and also supplies these really, really heavy duty parts. If you want to tow a trailer, uh, it's really, really, really quality stuff, but also providing fantastic set of instructions. I did not struggle at all with this install. And uh, if you are thinking about this hitch, hopefully this video helps, but also their manual is really, really fantastic. So anyways, I'm going to link the hitch down in the description as, as well as everything that I've used today in this video. Uh, but let me know if this was somewhat helpful by either commenting below or giving me thumbs up. So at this point, I'm going to attach a bike rack to it and I'm gonna make a follow-up video because I got this cool bike rack. And eventually once I'm ready for the trailer, I'm going to bring it to the dealer to program the, uh, the wiring harness. But for now, I can use it with my bike hitch because a bike hitch does not require extra light. So on that note, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.